Hey guys, how's it going? Francisco here. So this is the new SCB7 that I just got from the guys at Kiesel Carving Guitars. And as you notice, it's a little bit less flashy than my other Kiesels. But to be honest, it's the best sounding one yet. The one that I seem to gel with a little bit more. So I'm pretty stoked about it. And it's a little bit more subtle than the others, but still got some unique features here and there. So I would like to give you a brief review of the instrument. Um, so let's get to it. Um, the first thing you notice is it's a single cut and the name itself SCB7 stands for single cut bevel seven string. Uh, it's a very modern interpretation of the classic single cut design. It's neck through. The upper fret axis is pretty much perfect in my opinion. No problem whatsoever. Another thing that you notice is that this top, a lot of people mistake it for ebony, but it's actually ash. It's painted black. The specific name for the finish is jet black. And there's a, a very unique finish that is applied on top of that, which is called row tone. And what row tone is, it's a very, very thin layer of matte finish applied on top, so thin that you can actually still see and actually feel the grain of the wood underneath the finish not only on the top, but on the body as well. Um, what's the purpose of this? It's so thin that it still lets the, the wood breathe properly. Uh, you know that very thick layers of coating might actually dampen the resonance of the instrument. Uh, in this case, it's totally free to resonate, but at the same time, there's still a little bit of protection against humidity changes, weather changes, and all of that. Um, so it's kind of in the middle between tomb oil and an actual finish. Um, it feels more like tung oil. Uh, the neck itself is actually tung oil. I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's a, a thin layer that separates the road tone finish side to the tung oil side. I think it's pretty cool. Um, what else? We got um, just a, a volume here. I never ever use the tone knob at all. So I just opted for the volume knob in the tone position. Uh, we've got a five-way switch. Um, other woods involved are, well, we've got a, the Swamp Ash Top, as I've mentioned. We've got Black Limo Wings. We've got a three-piece neck, which is pretty unique. I'll talk about this later. Um, it's got maple, mahogany, maple, ebony fretboard. And also here on the headstock, we have ash overlay, which is also road tone finish. Um, the ebony in this case is pretty unique as well. Again, not really sure if you can see this, but it's got some nice flame on it. And flame on ebony is something that is very, very rare. I've seen this only on this guitar, another two in my life. Well, you know that flame is very common on maple, koa, and stuff like that. But on ebony, I think it it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, again, it's very, very subtle. You can notice that here. Hopefully the camera captures that in this lighting. Um, other stuff we have, we've got going on here, we've got two uh, diamond inlays only at the 12th fret. I think it looks a little bit more classy. Um, we've got lumen inlays here. If you don't know what lumen inlays are, basically when you're playing live on very dark stages, uh, those light up. So they permit you to see a little bit more of the, the fretboard when you're playing around and don't get lost and all of that. Um, this guitar was meant to be played live by me and the other guitarist. So we thought about that when choosing those specifications. Um, what else? Oh, fixed bridge, hip shot, just the best sounding fixed bridge in the market. Uh, always so even sounding, very punchy, very direct. Cannot go wrong with that. Um, Kiesel locking tuners, those are just fine. Those are just as fine as any other big brand names out of here. So I cannot complain about those at all. Um, am I missing something? I don't know. Oh yeah, stainless steel frets. Um, those compared to the, just the normal nickel frets are like, they are always so everlasting. They do like last forever. They're so smooth when they, you, you want to bend or stuff like that. So I definitely cannot go back to normal frets after playing stainless steels. Uh, those are mid jumbo. Uh, I don't like jumbo frets that much because the gap in between the height of the fret and the fretboard is a little bit too much. And that actually means that when you're pressing your finger against the fretboard, 
the node might actually get a little bit out of tune because of that gap in between the height of the fret and, and the level of the fretboard. By having a little bit less big frets, I can avoid that, so I like that. Um, what else? Uh, the pickups are, well, the Kiesel pickups. Um, those are exactly the same pickups that I have that I have in my, my Vader. Uh, well, the Vader has the 8-string version and this has the 7-string version, but they do sound a little bit different here. I do think that this guitar suits this pickups a little bit more because this guitar is naturally a little bit brighter than the Vader uh, because of the ebony fretboard, the swamp patch top. Those are a little bit more compressed with less mids. Uh, those pickups have a lot of mids, like a lot of huge low mids. That is awesome. But if you have an instrument that is already pretty warm, like my Vader, I wouldn't say that's too much, but it really is giant sounding. In this case, uh, it's a little bit more versatile because the guitar itself, as I've mentioned, is brighter with less mids. So overall, it's a little bit more versatile. Also, I found that Ebony Fretboard and Swamp Patch Top Oral give so much clarity, especially to the lower string. It almost sounds like a baritone, even if it's just 25.5 scale. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, let's talk about the more unique feature here, which is a three-piece neck. Um, why three-piece? Well, Carvin, as you've probably already noticed, offers generally five-piece necks, or uh, as of recent, the, the new key series offers seven-piece necks. Um, other guitars, such as the Jason Becker signature, offer one-piece neck. So why three? Well, first, I think it looks a little bit more unique than usual. Second, there is actually a more um, deep reason. Uh, it's subtle, but I do think that the less woods involved in the instrument the purer, the more pure the sound is. Um, the more you start coupling woods together, the more each wood's frequency starts to cancel out with the other woods involved. And I think in the end, it's actually counterproductive to the overall resonance of the instrument. I've had this problem with guitars with way too many layers on the necks and they were just not resonating enough to me. They were sounding kind of dead. Uh, so, Definitely, I opted for less pieces overall. And you'd be ask, you, you could ask, hey, but why did you just go with one if less is more in this case? Um, well, one is good, but still not, in my opinion, uh, consistent enough to uh, provide you stability for humidity changes, weather changes, and all of that. That's why three-piece neck is, in my opinion, a little bit better. Well, Carvin offers carbon fiber reinforcements. So in that case, also one piece neck would be just fine, but I just wanted to have just a little bit more. And um, I guess that's about it. So I really, really like this instrument. I'm stoked about it. And I hope that you like this brief review. So until next time, peace. <laughs>